What's up, motherfuckers? So, back with a moody and stormy night in the shed. I hope you can hear me over the rain. If you can't, I'll take this clip out. If you can, then this is why you're watching it. So we got like, pathetic fallacy, and the mood reflects the atmosphere. I'm not moody though, so it isn't really pathetic fallacy. It should be a sunny evening. A mildly sunny evening with moderate temperatures would reflect the mood. So I'm doing, uh, still have Le Pinky in, uh, in its sarcophagus. So we are doing what we can. Previously during the week, I've done four Jiu Jitsu sessions in terms of squatting, 150 for a couple of sets of three, going good. A little bit of the knee pain in the back again, but I'll talk about that, that in a different video, but the, I won't say it's back. I'm still address, addressing the original issue. Uh, overhead stuff, did some push press, which is good with this, so I will keep going with more overhead stuff. The rain is getting louder, so I'll just get the training, and you can watch with, and we'll move to the uh, voiceover. Oh, and uh, today's podcast that we're warming up to is the Morning Brew, where Seb and uh, Anthony Joshua, I think, I keep hearing Joshua, so I assume it's Anthony Joshua, are talking about Ian Wilson's positive test, which I don't know if we're going to do a video on that or not. I don't know if we should jump on the bandwagon. I'm probably going to leave it, to be honest. You, like, obviously, you guys know what my thoughts are um, and what Darius thoughts would be on that. More power to Mr. Wilson. You know, obviously it's shit that he stepped on some people, but, you know, as we always say, he is very unlikely to be the only person in the great country of America who is doing the business, you know. For example, if you were front squatting and jerking a uh, world record in your weight class. But again, obviously, you know, if you were doing that, our stance would be the same, it'd be more power too, you know? Welcome back to this week's training vlog. We are doing some shoulder stuff again. Just a little bit of that lingering thing in my shoulder, just a mild muscular thing. Nothing too serious, just go to do shoulder warm-ups anyway. Just like these kind of full can exercises, kind of at like 45 degrees like I did last week. Uh, this was the end of this week's session. As I mentioned, I've done a, about four sessions of jiu-jitsu and about three strength training sessions. So still pushing the overhead stuff, uh, such good push press. And as I mentioned, I did some push press during the week as well, which I was uh, pretty happy with. So I haven't done any kind of jerk stuff overhead yet. So any static grip power jerks or jerks and rack, even though I think I could, I've just been a little bit cautious with it. I'm going back to the uh, DACA tour right after I'm recording this to see what they say. So I think that still be fine anyway. It shouldn't be too much difference, but I was just being a little bit cautious. Uh, on one end of the thing, so I do prefer static grip push press and strict overhead squats when you're in a gpp phase so i like that stability stuff especially if you've been after a long period of time where you're not doing a lot of overhead stuff a lot of overhead work i enjoy and i appreciate the benefits i started the last few training blocks with strict overhead squats normally what i do is snatch plus overhead squats and i think you get a lot of benefit from the strict portion so a lot of shoulder stability a lot of more kind of dedicated mobility work for the overhead and the bottom position the snatch balances, of course, you can use more weight, but obviously there is less time under tension with the barbell overhead. And that's not really what I'm looking for is use more weight. Really what I'm looking for is rebuilding stability. Uh, so I know you could do like snatch grip power jerk into overhead squat, which would be fine as well. But I do like the, uh, the snatch grip push press, but I might change it up with this week and do some snatch grip power jerks into strict overhead squats so not technically a snatch balance i know there's a bit of a, a discussion or sometimes people have different names for snatch balances and snatch drops and pop snatches and cocoa pop snatches and whatever but uh i like to keep the the names similar so this is one of my favorite overhead stretches at the moment so obviously you can do this with a squat rack but i don't have the or you can do it at a cage i should say not really a squat rack so it really opens up the shoulders, uh, slightly wider jerk grip, or you can go narrow if you want, it doesn't matter too much, and just push into it. Two or three sets of like 15 second holds. Very nice for the weightlifters watching. So in this session was just working up for the a lot of warm up. So a lot of these sessions after doing, you know, a lot of jiu-jitsu, just making sure I'm warming up properly because I'm not weightlifting every day. If I was weightlifting every day, I'd probably do a little bit of a shorter warm up. But as I, you know, 
kind of restarting training again the last few weeks just really making sure that there's nothing cropping up um now is not the time to be allowing injuries to happen from inadequate warm-up and just addressing stuff that may have been deteriorated over the training block so just making sure So, thorough warm up the barbell, like warming up the weightlifting shoes on. I am currently at 102.5 um, in body weight, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm down from about 106-ish, and I'll keep going. Hopefully, I'll make it to the 98th. Yeah, so another couple of kilos. So if I need to for the competition, for the jiu-jitsu competition, I will likely water load. Hopefully, I won't. I will just keep going and be able to make it without the cutting because... As I mentioned previously, I actually want to be at that particular weight for weightlifting itself for you know power to weight ratio. There's no need to have excess fat when there's no reason. Uh, I could bulk up if I needed to, but there isn't, I don't think there'll be a concern at the moment for my weightlifting to be heavier. I don't necessarily need it. There's no particular reason the strength is there. You know, I've done what I may not be able to do the exact same numbers. You still get a lot of those benefits from having those strength numbers for weightlifting. And obviously positions are much, much better. Rack position, overhead position, speed, all of those things are very, very important for weightlifting. And any change in those can be detrimental for weightlifting technique. As I find out sometimes, if I get a little bit too heavier than what I'm probably ideally suited for in terms of weightlifting. Now, if I, obviously if I was powerlifting, it would be going in the opposite direction, probably north of 110 or so, depending on uh, the body composition or what I needed. But for weightlifting, definitely, I think the late 90s should be 98 or so, or 99 should be a sweet spot for weightlifting. You know, one thing I always think about as well is when you're cutting weight for competition or just cutting weight in training is you don't actually need that many carbs. You know, obviously a lot of protein is very, very beneficial, but uh, I think we a lot of us will fool ourselves into eating too many carbohydrates. You know, you're, no, I'm not saying keto was the best way to go for training it's definitely not from i think vast amount of people's personal experience but you probably don't need 500 grams of carbs you could probably be okay with 250 or 200 grams of carbs like there is a lot of times i see we a lot of us and myself included at points in our training a lot of athletes will like okay i've got to eat some carbs i've got to eat some carbs for training you know it's even funny when we're watching craig ritchie there um, just mentioning about eating the jellies, you know, and people are kind of like joking. And I do appreciate the jokes. They're saying like, oh, I thought I was going to learn something, but Owen just likes jellies. But the, you know, it's a lot of times I think we can fool ourselves a little bit into overemphasizing the use of carbs for training. You definitely need them, but the quantity which you need them isn't as much as you think it would be. And the effectiveness in intra-workout nutrition or pre-workout nutrition is, uh, it's not as big a deal as you think it is. You know, protein hydration sodium all that stuff would be similarly important interesting stuff about carbohydrates though is that even in the absence of protein post-workout meals so if you had about 100 grams of carbs rather than you'd preserve muscle so rather than maintaining muscle through an anabolic window with the additional protein if you just had carbohydrates you'd maintain muscle through anti-catabolic protein or an anti-catabolic anti-catabolic uh, pathways which is quite interesting do you see me here? Just to change it up, on this session, I did some snatch grip behind the neck thrusters into an overhead squat. So just some push press motion, a nice general GPP exercise. You see the Koreans are a big fan of the behind the neck press, as they call it, or the uh, back squat press, I think it translates to sometimes on Instagram. So they seem to like that a lot, um, mostly with the jerk grip, but they seem to sometimes do it. Uh, I see the Uzbek team are doing it as well. I also see the Ukrainian team doing some kind of heaving snatch balance and Georgians do that as well where they don't move their feet in the snatch balance which I actually think is quite a better movement if you're not an advanced or if you're a beginner lifter so or if you are an advanced lifter so if you're a beginner lifter I think the snatch balance is very important to practice moving your feet kind of dynamically under load but I think ultimately the no foot snatch balance or the push press movements are a little bit more beneficial because you're getting a lot of that stability work. You don't particularly need to practice your footwork for snatch balances, you know, if you're snatching north of 130 or 140 kilos. We've seen Lash, for example, do that 230 kilo snatch balance and stuff. And I think it's a little bit safer. The main thing I'd be kind of emphasizing on the snatch grip work overhead is that it's very, very easy to injure your shoulder and do some kind of damage. That really extreme range of motion could be quite detrimental if you push stuff a lot. So if you're doing a lot of heavy snatch balances, 
or a lot of heavy snatch grip push press. So then just move on to back squats. Again, like I mentioned, the volume is quite low, but the frequency is higher than I would have had it at the moment if I hadn't injured my finger. So I would have had the volume higher sets and reps. I'd probably get like sixes and eights at the moment, probably one to twice a week, but I'd have more front squats as well. But given you know the finger, I wanted to squat more frequently. So I have dropped the reps and I just worked at the 170 for one triple today. I love how squats feel at the current body weight. They just feel, I'm sitting really nicely in between my hips. My shoulder and back mobility feels a lot better. A lot more upper back tightness. I, you know, you probably don't notice the difference, but I feel more upright in the squat. I feel like I have a better use of my legs. One detrimental thing though, with the reduced weight and the increase in mobility is that my lower back is just exposed to a bit new range of motion. So, Partially because of the new range of motion from, you know, heavy squatting again or heavier squatting with a large range of motion for my hips. So obviously, there's less muscle mass and less fat mass and less tissue everywhere. So I can sit in between my hips a little bit more. So I am um, my lower back was just feeling it a little bit. Not so much in terms of like my lower back is injured, but it was certainly feeling a bit more restrained. And obviously, as I haven't been doing a whole lot of pulls, I am. Um, you know, my lower back is probably fatiguing a little bit. So I am working in some stiff legged deadlifts here, even sans pinky. So just going to have the strongest ring finger and middle finger in weightlifting at the moment. So just worked up a couple of sets of 120 just to work them back in. I'd like to be doing more of them, but obviously just have to be careful with that thingy. So lads, I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, really enjoying training at the moment. Uh, another couple of weeks of hardcore jiu-jitsu and then we'll be back, hopefully, to weightlifting. Thanks, guys.